Hi, I'm Mark Fulton with the Unleash team. Welcome to this video where we'll take a look at environment import export functionality in Unleash. In simple terms, environment import and export allows you to copy feature toggles from one Unleash instance to another or between environments in the same instance. This capability allows for migrations between the following to be carried out. From a self-hosted to an instance hosted by Unleash, SAS. From open source Unleash to pro or enterprise. Between multiple self-hosted instances. Import-export could also be used as part of a backup and recovery strategy for feature toggles. In the main part of today's video, we'll start with a look at how to export toggles and what data is included in the export. From there, we'll review the import process, that is, where to trigger the import, preparation steps to, to provide the import source, the validation stage, and finally, completing the import. The process is fully transparent, so you can understand what changes will be carried out in your project before you're ready to commit the import. We'll start with the export. In our Unleash instance, export can be accessed in the UI in a number of different areas. The projects menu inside a project, which is what we see here, and also the feature toggle section at the top. Inside the project page here, you can select one or multiple feature toggles for export. When you choose the export button it's going to prompt you from which environment you want to export the feature toggle configuration from. Let's choose development. It's then going to download that as a JSON consolidated file. The second place where you can export toggles is from the feature toggles part of the UI. There basically you can use filters uh, to filter one or multiple toggles down that you'd like to export. So you're always, always going to be exporting the current view of toggles as it's displayed here. Export current selection. So if there was, for example, if we only wanted to export the Mark Banking toggle, we would filter for that, and then we would be able to export it. Let's look at what data is actually exported, what's included inside the JSON snippet. And it's here we're going to move across to the Unleash documentation. One key point to emphasize is that when you carry out an export, the export contains both feature-specific configuration as well as global configuration required to support those feature toggles. So on the project level um, yourself, uh, itself, uh, you export the feature uh, and the feature configuration, including any sort of activation strategies. Then you would have uh, feature tags in the export there as well. On the environment level, um, when you choose an environment, it will also export for that environment the activation strategies. Those include constraints and any references to segments. This is sort of an important one because it doesn't actually export the segment itself, but only a reference. Um, so this has ramifications when uh, the import is carried out uh, that we'll look at in a little bit. It will also um, export any variants that are configured at the environment level for that feature toggle and the state of the feature toggle, whether it's been enabled or disabled. Then some global configuration items um, that, are that are part of the JSON export include custom context fields and then also feature tag types. Again, these are items that may need the dependent uh, items that may be required when you carry out the feature toggle import operation. Moving on to importing. Import will be available from uh, it within a project. So if we go back to our project here, 
let's uh, navigate and look at the import workflow just so that we can understand everything that's involved in that process. And you can see an import icon here at the project level. Importing is a three-stage operation. The first step is the upload. So you can upload a previously exported JSON file or you can copy paste the export data from the exported JSON into the code editor here. So it's up to you whether you use the file selector or whether you just paste JSON code uh, directly into uh, the editor here as well. You are also prompted to choose the environment that you are going to import um, the configuration for there as well. And the, it will also provide some guidance here on what will actually be imported. Uh, so that includes the toggle, strategies, context fields, variants, tags, and the state of the toggle uh, itself. Uh, it also sets a couple of expectations here. So if um, the toggle already exists in the same name, it will be overwritten. So this is by design um, in case you want to import a newer version of the toggle. It will allow you to do that, but it will be overwritten. Remember in Unleash, uh, we have a requirement that we cannot have the same feature toggle name shared between multiple feature toggles. Every feature toggle uh, inside an Unleash instance must have a unique name. Uh, if segments or custom strategies are defined in the import, um, the import process uh, will stop because you will need to create them first in the target instance and redo uh, the import. The next stage um, that is carried out is validation. This is where you get feedback on any errors or warnings before the actual import is performed. So this basically makes sure that your feature flag configurations are sound given the configuration already in place and the state of the target instance. You won't be able to finish the import if any errors appear here. However, if you see warnings in this step, um, they won't stop you from actually carrying out the import. And then the last stage is to commit the import. This will be the process that creates a new configuration in the target environment, or if you have change requests enabled for that uh, environment on that project, um, then the change request draft will be created for you. Couple of things uh, to keep in mind here. I'm gonna jump back to our documentation reference, right? Um, when you perform an export, you select a set of features and one environment to export the configuration from. Then when you import, you must select one environment and one project to import into. So all the features are then import, imported into that project, into that uh, environment. And that sort of makes sense given sort of uh, where we place the uh, import wizard uh, inside the project page in the user interface. If Unleash is unable to import the configuration safely, that is, it's not able to pass that second validation step that we saw in the UI, um, it will tell you why the import failed and what you need to do to fix it. And the, the nice thing is it's going to provide you with some very detailed feedback here rather than just a simple generic error or warning. So that then you know exactly what steps you have to take in order to correct the configuration on the target instance you're running the import for. Let's move forward now and look at the detailed import requirements item by item. So we already talked about feature name conflicts. We can't have any conflicting feature names if trying to import to a different project on the target instance. If you're importing the feature into the same project, remember it will be overwritten. 
then let's talk about context fields. If you are using custom context fields, these would be used for constraints. You know, this is a refresher. Uh, context would be something like user ID, session ID, current time, something that's passed from the client to evaluate to help unleash evaluate the state of a toggle for that client. If you're using custom context fields and a custom context field with the same name exists in the target environment, the pre-existing field must have at least those values defined that are in the source. There are no requirements if importing custom context fields without values or ones that don't already exist in the target environment. Moving on to segments. Segments with the same names must exist in the target instance. However, the actual definition of the segment doesn't need to match. Likewise for custom strategies. Strategies with the same names must exist in the target instance, but their actual definitions do not need to match. Um, if you are using change requests uh, for the environment, and a change request policy has been set up for it, um, it follows that the target project and environment cannot have any pending change requests. This is basically by design just to make sure that uh, we don't have kind of a conflicting uh, mess potentially with multiple sets of changes being queued, right? In terms of permissions, you'll need the update feature toggles permission in the project in order for the import to be carried out successfully. Depending on the uh, actions the import job triggers, you may need some additional ones as well. If you're creating new features, uh, you need create feature toggles. If you're updating tags, uh, sort of self-explanatory here, depending again on the scope of the data that's contained um, within the import. Let's jump back to our Unleash instance and what we will do is um, go through an actual feature toggle import operation. So um, here I have uh, a local uh, enterprise instance running uh, just on my local machine as a container. I also have a, a separate hosted instance here. So let's now sort of explore the use case of moving toggles in between instances. Uh, I have a couple of different projects open here that I want to be exporting toggles from. Let me select these four toggles inside my demo intro project. I'm gonna mark those for export. We're going to export them from the development environment. We'll also move across to a different project and we're going to carry out one toggle that we want to export from here. And now that the exports have been completed, let's go uh, to our target Unleash instance. And then we will um, start the import process. Remember, we can access that from uh, one of two areas, from uh, within a project or from uh, feature toggles itself. Remember that to carry out an import, uh, we need to be inside the project itself that is the target uh, for the feature toggles contained in the uh, source file. Let's start now um, by selecting the first JSON. And conveniently, you can see the UI moves over to code editor, so it displays the contents of that particular JSON. Uh, and again, this is just sort of allowing you to preview exactly what's in it. You know, what feature toggles, what activation strategies, any other custom fields that need to be included, like any segments, any tag types, anything like that, um, that 
is either project or global level that is um, required to support the import of the feature toggles. Um, it also follows that you could just create your own JSON as well. You don't necessarily need to have retrieved the JSON from an export. As long as it's in this format, then the relevant uh, Unleash import and validation APIs will be able to use, uh, use the, the file. And again, just sort of remind us here of the import process, what it's going to do. Let's go ahead and validate this one. And so looking at the validation step, um, you can see uh, what we are doing here. You are importing this configuration into, it'll show you the environment and project. Then it's going to show you any warnings or any, uh, uh, any stop or critical errors. And it seems we already have some instances of these feature toggles um, in an archived state in the project. In order to import, we need to unarchive those first, at, at which point the import project will uh, go ahead and overwrite them. Let's cancel the import, go into our archive, revive the feature toggles. And now at this point, we can redo the import. Perform the validation and you see it passes. Remember, because those toggles already exist in this target project, it's going to override them. So again, these could just be a newer version from our other instance. Then it shows you import complete. Um, again, it did not create a change request because we do not have change requests uh, enabled for this particular environment. And we can see those toggles here uh, in exactly the same state as they were on the source instance. Let's try this again using our second toggle that we exported from the different project. We'll pick the same target environment and perform a validation. Now, in this case, we have a conflict. You can see that the wizard does not allow us to proceed with the import process. There's something that needs to be fixed. You can see that we have a custom strategy defined in the import uh, that does not exist on the target instance. And then you can also see that uh, we have some segments in the import that also need to be created first. So again, very useful details as to what you need to do uh, in order to um, fix the configuration of the target instance and what uh, reflect respective objects you need to create before retrying the import process. That's everything. Now you should have everything you need to start exporting feature requests and importing them into other environments or totally separate instances. Thanks for watching.